Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm painting a scene of trees in the winter sun and what interested me about this particular scene was the uh, lighting. So there's a backlighting, then we have a winter situation with snow with lots of shadows and um, yeah so I wanted to make this a part of my uh, folktale landscapes and um, for this series of landscape sketches I'm trying to find landscapes that could be the backdrop or the background for folk tales or local legends so scenes with a certain atmosphere and I thought this um, this particular scene matched this idea quite nicely. As always, I'm starting with my pencil sketch and I'm taking a lot of time for this sketch because I want to get the individual trees and all the branches just right. So I'm, I'm taking my time looking at the reference and uh, I've already placed some loose and light lines that you probably can't see on the video and then I'm placing the trees into the scene. And what we will have here is um, a winter scene with nice weather. So as you can see in, in the small reference on the right, we have a lot of sun that's um, coming towards us. So the, the scene is backlit and the sun is coming, the sunlight is coming through the trees. And this is something that's not as easy to paint as a scene that where you have the sun in the back but uh, it's it's really a challenge and so this is why I wanted to try this. Also taking my time with the foreground as you can see there's a lot going on uh, structurally and then we have all of these um, bluish shadows that come from the trees and so uh, I need a little bit of visual uh, anchoring so that I make the right painting decisions later and I always find that when I have um, a good foundation, a good pencil sketch, then the rest is a lot easier. I also did a small preliminary sketch as a color test before I painted this larger scene and this also helps me a lot um, um, about figuring out the colors that I want to use, the, the mixes and um, what goes where in my painting. So uh, right now I'm redefining the branches, uh, adding more um, emphasis with a softer pencil. And these are all, if you know my videos, these are all familiar techniques to you because it's often the same way that I work. And there are a lot of branches in this scene. So uh, it's taking me a while to do this. And if you're wondering about how to draw branches, then uh, I can only say it's all a thing of practice. So um, to get branches to look realistically is to take a good look at your reference, take a look at trees, how the branches on them grow uh, organically and then just observe and draw, observe and draw and repeat until you have a grasp on this. Take a look at how other artists do this. I actually find that um, in the end in my painting the branches don't look as convincing as they do here in my pencil sketch. So I, I did a better job on my pencil sketch than on uh, the watercolor part. But it's really a thing of practice. I'm adding these slight lines to indicate where the shadows will go later, the tree shadows. And now we're starting to paint over this. So the first thing I do is I'm wetting down the top part of the page, so uh, the sky part. I want really nice um, even color for the sky. I'm using Taylor blue here and I'm dropping it in in a few places. This darker blue is ultramarine 
and near the sun you can see that the blue is lighter and uh, slightly greener, so the halo blue. And the further you get away from the sun, you can change your blue to be actually more bluer, more redder. So I'm dropping in my pigment. I don't worry about any of the trees because I can paint over this later. Now I'm, I'm adding a bit of the background landscape. So there are some hills in the background. And all of this on a wet surface so that they are the pigments will dilute and be nicely um, smoothed out. I'm also adding the green of the grass in the middle ground. And I try not to drop in too much pigment, but rather spread it around with the tip of my brush here. So I'm using a flat brush for these uh, large areas and then I can define um, edges with the tip or with the side of the brush rather. And I'm switching my brush for the foreground areas. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to match the a balance between the snowy areas and the ground that I can see. And I also want to keep this um, sort of uh, the light falling through. I'm trying to think of this. And now that the sky has dried, I can start working on this light effect. So the sun is shining through the trees and I need to um, paint this optical effect that you can see the light um, breaking up into its components. So you actually see uh, the white of the sun and then a ring of yellow and orange and red around it. And so this is the backlighting that I was talking about. So you will actually um, paint this visual effect. And I'm very um, sparingly dropping in these yellows and reds. And I want to let this dry so that I don't overwork it later when I uh, go back to it. And I'm actually starting on uh, putting in the shadows in the foreground. So I've mixed up a nice dark blue with a little bit of uh, violet because the shadows that I see have a lot of blue in them and um, yeah, taking my time painting in the right uh, geometrical patterns, so to speak. I try to put down as much pigment as I can right from the start so that, that I don't have to repaint all of these um, shapes again. So I'm dropping in really a lot of dark pigment here. And in the back the shadows are slightly lighter. So the trees are not as sparse there and the shadows are smaller and they are dissolving so to speak. So now that I've painted in the darkest shadows, I can continue to paint in sort of the middle tones, the um, areas where there's not exactly a hard dark shadow, but it's not in the sunlight either. And then I noticed that my background was a little bit too light, so I added a bit of tree structure there. And this is totally fine. I can work on the background still because I haven't added any trees uh, in the foreground. So I can just paint over these areas later. I've switched to a smaller brush here and I'm adding more of the structures that I can see on the ground. So all of the leaves and the, the earth that I can see and later when I'm finished, I'm hoping that the areas that are in shadow, but not as dark. So these all of these blue areas that are sort of this middle tone 
will register as snow. So you can see in the reference there's actually a lot of snow on the ground, and uh, but the snow is blue because it's in the shadow. And this is the effect that we're going for. So in the end it's basically you paint what you see but you need to see it in the right way first. So all of us know, well, snow is white, but if you're in the shadow and uh, you have the right lighting conditions, then it doesn't appear white, it appears blue. And uh, this is this needs to be reproduced in, in a painting or in such a sketch like this one. And now I'm starting with an almost black, with a really dark color on the trees in the foreground. And again, I'm taking my time for this. I'm dropping in a lot of pigment because I don't want to paint over this several times. I just want to paint it once if possible. And so this isn't entirely black. It has a little bit of sepia mixed in, some reds, some blues, all depending on what I can see in my reference, what the lighting is like. You can see I will, um, the next tree that I will paint is the one that's hit by the sun, by this backlighting situation, and I need to add more reds to, um, to this dark color. And I'm already adding the small twigs and branches that are in front of the sunlight, so to speak. They appear red to our eyes, and or, or slightly orangey. And so this is what I will paint. Also intensifying this light flare, this, this backlighting. And since I've never really painted a scene like this before, it's a bit of an experimental thing for me. So um, now I'm adding the dark tree trunk. But I still want to make sure that I'm getting the sun flare. So I'm painting around the area that I defined earlier. And I'm actually taking a bit of the dark color out so that it looks like there is sort of this glow to the entire thing. And I let this dry and work on the other trees. Uh, there are enough trees in the scene to keep me busy. And as I said before, I think I did a good job on the drawing uh, of these branches in the background. But the painting part, I probably should have used a different brush for this. So uh, this is a smaller brush, but it's not a really small brush. Um, there are brushes like uh, rigger brushes, which can get you really nice uh, naturalistic effects. And so uh, these tree branches look a little bit more like... Um, I don't know, like from a comic book or really uh, almost stylized. So I, I don't like the um, effect that I painted there in the background, but I think the rest of the painting has turned out fine. So for teaching purposes, it's at least um, very useful. And I'm adding more of this red glow to the tree. Painting in more details, like these fence posts. And basically, it's almost, uh, in some areas, it's almost like um, a cut-out scene. So rather black and white, but when you look at the areas in the foreground, at the snow, it's really not white. It's all kinds of colors. It's um, blue and violet, and then this brownish tone in the back. And I'm just adding more white back in to redefine the snowy areas a bit more. And then we have more blue. And of course I'm bringing out some colored pencils to help me with redefining some of the areas. So the lighting situation on the tree and also some of the snowy areas in the front on the ground. And so this light blue is a really nice addition to uh, this sketch. And it's also a really soft colored pencil. These are uh, Carandash, super soft, I believe they're called. And these are really uh, nice and soft, so they uh, release a lot of pigment when you press down. 
and I'm adding wash white to uh, this reflective area here with a little bit of yellow mixed in. So I'm probably overworking this a bit, but I found this um, this effect to be really tricky to paint. And I hope I did at least a halfway con convincing job on it. Anyway, I think the painting is finished. I'm removing the masking tape. Since this was an experiment as painting techniques go, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. So um, I really like the atmosphere in this painting. I'm really thinking it fits into this series of folktale landscapes. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this too. As always, um, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. And you can also learn more about the series of paintings in my other videos or on my blog. And you can learn about more uh, about painting also in my courses. And you can also support me there. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.